subject, which is the AMM. I am unreasonably excited about this for largely personal reasons. I've spent a lot of time studying things like trading strategies and forex markets, and this is near and dear to my heart. Um, I also learned something that I didn't know, which is um, as I watched automated market makers develop on other chains, I sort of thought that automated market makers were better than order books. That like we implemented order books on the XRP ledger because it's sort of like the obvious thing, and then there's this really cool thing called an, called an automated market maker that most other like. DeFi platforms are using most other DEXs are using, and I learned as I looked into it that they're very complementary. They are not one or the other. One is not better than the other. They each have their own advantages and disadvantages, and the two of them together is way better than anything that you could get from having either one independently. And XLS30 is not just another AMM implementation. This was not the XRP ledger playing catch up. We were caught up with an order book.、Um, this is a true innovation. The XRP ledger is a trusted and leading enabler of DeFi because the underlying architecture of the ledger, combined with the protocol native design of the decentralized exchange and soon the AMM, will address most of the pain points faced in the decentralized liquidity landscape today. The XRPL's DEX was launched in 2012, the first DEX in the world. Tokenization of any asset, the ability to trade and move these tokens anywhere in the world in just seconds, and open, globally competitive liquidity. Now. Adding AMM to that, AMM first and foremost, as I think about it, most people think of an AMM first and foremost as providing liquidity. I think of it first and foremost as a trading engine. Ripple X is focused on differentiating the world's first DEX through automated market making. The AMM specification is now on DevNet for testing, and it'll be available to vote on Mainnet. I think just in a in a couple of days. But ultimately, I see the AMM as a trading engine. It executes a trading strategy on behalf of the those people who sort of provide the liquidity. So, as most of you probably know, an AMM has a pile of two assets, and it makes markets between those two assets. But it's also implementing a trading、um, a yield. So, if, if you were an Apple buyer and seller, and the prices of apples were different around the world, you could go around the world buying and selling apples and make a profit. And what you would have is you'd have a pile of apples and a pile of currency, whatever currency you like, euros or dollars. And you would buy apples, and your pile of apples would go up, and your pile of currency would go down. And you would do that when the price was low, and then you would sell apples, right, when the price of apples was comparatively higher. And if you do that, eventually your pile of of money will get bigger. And that is essentially what the AMM tries to do. It implements a trading strategy to harvest volatility on behalf of the liquidity providers who loan it assets. I'm much more personally excited about that than I am about the fact that it provides liquidity. But it does also provide liquidity. It does also make markets.、Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it, but we normally think of arbitrage as arbitrage over over space, right? Like you go to this market and you buy, and you go to that market and you sell, and you go to this market and you buy. This is arbitrage over time. But it turns out arbitrage works over time too.、Um, it's it, the only problem is you don't know the price ahead of time, right? You can't predict. But it turns out you don't you don't need to. So an exciting development also is Orchestra Finance, independent of Ripple, which is going to be the first interface layer for the AMM. So the It provides benefits for all of the different stakeholders, the liquidity providers, the people who sort of take their assets and give them to the DEX, arbitragers, traders, and developers. Developers, of course, benefit from the liquidity that the automated market makers provide. Their tokens are more liquid, and so users can benefit from access to that liquidity. Liquidity providers want to maximize the returns that they get from the various different things that the automated market maker does to、uh, make a profit. XLS30 enables them to vote for trading fees. And probably the biggest single innovation is the continuous auction mechanism that reduces impermanent loss, and it also increases the efficiency of the volatility harvesting. What this does is this takes some of the profit that would normally be made by the arbitragers and gives it to the liquidity providers. The arbitragers are trying to make profit from sort of in asymmetric information. They have access to the prices off the ledger, and the AMM does not. The auction mechanism increases the probability of success to capture mispricing profits. And it enables the automated market makers' trading strategy to capture very small changes in price. If you think about it, big movements in price have a larger opportunity for profit simply because the price change is bigger. Like if you're buying and selling a stock and it moves a lot, you can make more money. But it doesn't do that very often. Small movements occur much more often. In aggregate, if you sum them all up, it's a greater opportunity than the large movements. But in order to catch the small movements, the system has to be very efficient. If there's a high fee, a small change in price won't be captured because people wait until the price difference exceeds the fee. If the transactions are slow 
and there's a small movement, you don't try to capitalize on that because the price might move against you before your trade can execute. The XRPLs, the XRP ledger's features make it easy to capture those smaller price movements. And of course, integration. The AMM is going to be integrated in the DEX.